Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel where I unbox and review all things budget tech. Today I'm going to continue on with my Black Shark series with the Mako M2 RGB wired gaming mouse. Just by looks alone, this is a well designed and aesthetically pleasing mouse. But is it all looks and no substance? Well, stay a while, listen, and let's get started. So, what's in the box? Well, we have the thank you card, the instruction manual, and the mouse itself. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I really like this mouse's simple design scheme. Yes, it's a gaming mouse, but it's not edgy like a lot of other gaming mice out there on the market. Taking a 360 look at this, you can see the contrast in the mouse design with the LED strips and where the left and right mouse button connect, where it makes it appear as if there are five pieces that make up this mouse. For those of you who have big hands, don't worry, this is a full-sized mouse and it fits well in the palm of your hand. Now going over the left and right mouse buttons, they have a fairly standard pressure sensitivity. However, the forward and backward buttons on the side are kind of like a hair trigger. It takes a little effort or little pressure to depress them. The mouse wheel feels good in that when you scroll, you can feel the little bumps as you move it, but not too much to where it's a little rough when scrolling. The DPI buttons are fairly standard as well. The mouse cable length is 1.8 meters or almost 6 feet. So to maximize the personalization of your mouse, you do need to download a Black Shark app. I'll go ahead and put the link in the description here. The only button you cannot change is the left mouse button. All the other buttons you can change to whatever you want them to correspond to. You can change each button to control a different setting, such as turning on or off the LEDs, a dedicated sniper button, multimedia controls, and whatnot. Now while on the app, the performance tab is where you can control the DPI settings from setting number 1 which is 800 DPI to setting number 7 which is 5000 DPI and you can also set the DPI in between the given settings as well. For example, if you feel 5000 DPI is too much, you can go ahead and set it to 4999 DPI. I mean, if you want. You can also control how fast you want the mouse to move, the scroll speed when using the mouse wheel, and the double click speed as well. For the RGB lighting, you can personalize everything with this mouse, and yes, even the Black Shark logo can be changed as well. You have four different RGB light settings, single color breathing, cycle breathing, neon, and wave, and also off if you would prefer to not have any lights on. You can also change the intensity of the RGBs and how fast or slow they pulse. You also have the option of assigning macros to your mouse buttons as well. I don't usually do that, but for those of you that do, it is here for you. Here, we're going to go over the different light settings as I previously mentioned.
Now for the rest of this video, I left my mouse set to the blue and the breathing setting. What can I say about this mouse that hasn't already been said? Design-wise, I like its simplicity. I am not a fan of overly edgy or bright gaming mice or peripherals in general. The mouse is pretty lightweight, but not so much so that you forget you have a mouse in your hand. The thing I like most about this mouse is how you can control the RGBs on everything. Compared to the BSM-1 wireless mouse, you could only control the surrounding LEDs and the scroll wheel and the Black Shark logo had to stay green. The software that controls this mouse has a ton more options on customization than the previous mouse as well. One concern I do have though is that since it is wired, if the insides of the cable get bent or frayed, there's no way of fixing it and you'd have to get another one. Other mice just have a USB-C connection and are easily replaceable. Also, if you use the forward and backward buttons while playing games, you may accidentally press them like I mentioned before as they are super sensitive for some reason. Lastly, just to note, it seems each gaming peripheral has its own unique software that controls it. For example, you cannot use the software for the BSM-1 wireless mouse to control this. You need to download a separate specific one. I hope Black Shark can make a universal app that controls all Black Shark products in the future though. Another thing to note though is that surprisingly this does not have a single color setting to where it will only display uh, one color selected. So I thought that that was a curious choice here. For the price point of $13.99 at the time of this review, I would say that this is the better option of the current lineup of Black Shark mice. And at $13.99, you really can't go wrong. Alright, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed my Black Shark series. Go ahead and click on my Black Shark playlist to see the rest of them. Please leave a like, comment, or even subscribe for more budget tech. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.